Dear friends, welcome back to Automate with Rakesh. Now, as you know, we have been going through this advanced UI automation topic. And in this one, we have seen the demo on how the web driver works, a practical demo we have seen. So we are in this third topic of advanced UI automation. In this web driver protocol topic, there is also a section which talks around the known issues and limitations of web driver protocol or web driver automation. So what I have done, there are multiple paragraphs. If you see for visual automation, there are few paragraphs and for headless automation, there are few limitations written in the paragraph. What I have done to make it easy, I have created two simple tables, one having limitations of visual automation, the other one having limitation of headless automation. Now making note of this might help you in your exam. Now I am going to discuss each of this point one by one. Let's start with the very first one, which is visual automation. Using WebDriver, we can do two kinds of automation we have seen in our previous video. Now let's understand what are the limitations. The very first limitations is avoid iframes. Now to understand what is an iframe, you can Google that out. Now iframe is if, if I read this for you, an iframe is an HTML tag that shows a web page within a current web page. Now this I have demonstrated in my UiPath apps videos, right? How you can use a iframe control to have a page within another page. How can you show a web page within inside another page, right? Inside the main page, how can you show one more web page? So that is known as iframe. Now I'm going to explain it here. Selectors for UI elements inside iframes are not validated. If you are using WebDriver, they are not validated. So one important po one point, if you remember iframe, that would help you to recall. It is recommended to avoid iframes when you build your automation project. This occurs when elements identification is done by browser extension and selectors validation is done by the WebDriver protocol. So this is one of the point. So this point you might have understood to avoid iframes while going for WebDriver. The second point always creates a new browser session. When you are using WebDriver, it will always create a new browser session. Saved cookies and saved browser data are not taken into consideration. If it is using cookies, then you might see some problem during your automation. This is pretty well explained in the second bullet point. A browser automation created with the web driver protocol always creates a new browser session. Important point. This means that saved cookies and saved browser data are not taken into consideration. Important point when you build your automation project. Okay. Now let's look at the third point. The third point is selector is not found for a browser with multiple tabs open. So what it says, if a selector is not found for a browser with multiple tabs, if you have kept multiple tabs open, let's say rpachallenge.com, you have opened that in multiple tabs in your browser. The execution constantly switches between them. So there'll be some kind of problem you might face constantly switches between different tabs to see which one is the right one. In this scenario, it is recommended to create your automation project on a single browser tab. So these are a couple of limitations of a web driver when you go for a visual automation. While we have covered all these points, let's cover headless automation. Headless automation, in other words, you can see it as background automation. Now there is a problem. If you're using a click activity, type into activity or mouse over activity, something like that, what happens, you have to ensure these activity properties have been set to simulate or send with Windows message. Now this is clearly explained here, headless automation by WebDriver. Headless automation does not rely on visual element that we know. As such, the WebDriver protocol doesn't actually open a visible browser window when it is used in a headless mode. It doesn't open a browser window. It will happen everything in the background. Because of this, the headless automation cannot function with some activities which use hardware event in their default state. If you're using dragging and dropping a click activity, by default, it will use the hardware event. It will try to interact, right? They must be configured to use simulate click, simulate type or simulate hover properties or the send wind. Very important point, okay? 
So for example, here in this activity, if you see use browser activity, I'm using the headless, okay, web driver mode headless. If I'm using this headless mode, then I have to ensure I am using the simulate click, uh, simulate click activity for this one. For example, if I come here, then I have to ensure uh, the input mode, right? I have to either go with, by default, it will go with hardware event. So you should go with either simulate or else Windows message. Okay, these are the two different options recommended for you. Click, type into, for all of that, this input method needs to be changed to either simulate or Windows message. So I hope the first point is clear. Let's move on to the second point. Interact with images not supported. Now, if you look at the second bullet point, activities which interact with images, for example, click on clicking on image, find image, all those activities are not supported because they rely on browser window itself. So background automation during that, it will be not be supported only during the headless automation or the background automation. Interacting with Im images are not supported. Third point, event monitoring not supported. So we know there are multiple event monitoring activities. Event monitoring such as click trigger, hotkey trigger is not supported because they rely on hardware events. Okay, so this is also a very important point. The next important point is Windows tags not recommended. Now you have to use HTML tags instead. Now remember what is Windows tag? Using Windows tags in the close application activity only closes the browser session and not the corresponding web driver process. So what happens, the browser will get closed, but again, it doesn't close the web driver session. So it continues, okay? It is recommended to use HTML tags instead. This is another point. Now the last point, adaptive page layout not supported. So I have written in a very small, shorter format, which might help you to recall. Adaptive page layout not supported. Now what does that mean? When using Chrome or Firefox, the browser window opened by the WebDriver protocol always opens in the same visual space and with the same size specification. Moreover, some websites have adaptive page layout. Adaptive means if the screen size is small, it will automatically adjust all its text boxes, labels, everything according to the size of the screen. And this can lead to invalid selector when the window size is changed. When the window size gets changed, it might lead to invalid selector issue. In this regard, important point. Now in this regard, it is recommended to use default browser window size when you create your automation. So that time you have to go with the default browser size. So these are a couple of important points. I hope if you make a note of these points before your exam, you know, it might help you to recall and will be able to select the right answer for the question. I'm going to frame a couple of questions based on what we have studied and let's see how many of you can answer those questions.